Hi everyone, thank you again for watching another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, we're gonna have a look at the Tioga Spotlight Mount from Kame TV. This is a lightweight projection mount with surprisingly good optics for the price. And it seems to be compatible with a large range of Bowen mount lights, regardless of if they're monocolor, bicolor, or full color capable. Now, some of you might be looking at this and thinking, hey, I've seen this before. The front end of this is a Nanlite projector mount, one of their 60 range. Okay, so I am willing to bet $1,000 that these came from the same factory because not only uh, are they very, very similar in design, they look like they're made of the same materials and they look like they've got the same coatings on the lens optically, they also have identical quirks in terms of their, their optical performance and things like that. But here's the thing. They are both made very brand specific. So you can't take your barrels from your Nanlite kits and put them across onto the Kame TV kits. You can't even do things like uh, take the Iris across. They are made very brand specific. So even though they look identical, they are not. Well, it's a very quickly, a, a big overview of this. It's a bow and mount accessory. It's a projector attachment. I've done lots of episodes on these, so I'm going to assume that you know what this is. Now, you can put up to a 600 watt light onto this. Now, here's the catch. You can run it continuously with a 600 light for no longer than six hours. If you go any longer than that, the engineers have told me that you risk melting the barrels. Okay, so 600 watts for six hours. Okay, let's go into the pros and cons now. And in terms of pros and cons, I'm gonna compare it to a much heavier, much larger, and much more expensive projector mount. All right, so you've got some fair comparisons. All right, the first big pro for this is it seems to be very non-brand specific. So what I mean by that is I've tried this on aperture lights and I've tried it on Forza lights and it performs really, really well. The optics seem to be superb, no matter which light I put it onto. Now, the next advantage with this is it is incredibly lightweight, which makes it very easy to rig compared to something like this. It has very sharp optics. It has sharper optics than the bigger unit. Now, there's no surprise there because this has a smaller aperture or a smaller uh, opening. Then the bigger than the bigger the unit does. So the smaller your aperture, the sharper the optics that you get. So optically, very impressive unit across different brands. Now here's the disadvantage with this compared to a larger unit. The larger unit like this has a bigger optical pickup area, so you get dramatically more light out of this. Now, depending which light fixture you put on, you can get around two and a half times more light to almost four times more light out of the bigger unit. In terms of other negatives, you only seem to have a 20 degree lens option. The only other negative I have for this projection mount is you can't rotate the barrel. All right, so let's go through cost and what you get for your money. So it sells for about 400 US dollars. And I actually think this is sensational value for money. So for 400 bucks, it comes in a very well-constructed road case. Now the projection mount is very well constructed. It's very well built, nice and solid. The back part here is all metal and it would have to be if you're gonna put a 600 watt light on. Now in terms of how hot this gets, it does, it does have a heat warning on it, but if you're operating a 300, you're definitely not gonna need gloves to operate this. Now the front end here where it's made of uh, a nylon material uh, or nylon composite, this is very cool to touch. So you're gonna have no problems doing your adjustments and things like that. Just a warning though, if you, particularly if you're running a 600 watt, your uh, gobo holder is going to be very hot when you pull it out. All right, so the blades work and move very independently of each other. So you, you've got a fair bit of movement on the blades and it doesn't affect the other blades, which is fantastic. But as a negative, you cannot rotate the barrel. Now, the next thing in the kit is the gobo holder. Now, the gobo holder is an M series gobo holder. So that means you are compatible with brands like Roscoe in terms of getting gobo patterns. Also included in the kit is a set of 12 gobo patterns. And there are some good gobo patterns here that you could use in your backgrounds. They're not childish gobos or, or um, high school theatrical gobos. There's actually some good ones here. There's some ones that are a little bit weird, but overall pretty good useful patterns in the gobo kit. 
Also included in the kit is a gel holder, which you can put into the front of the light here, should you be using a light that doesn't have any color options. All right, so let's have a look at how this performs with various lights, starting off with one of their lights first. And this is the Kame TV 310B. Now this is a bicolor light using a striped LED orientation. If you wanna use this combination as a follow spot effect, you get a very even light distribution across the beam and a very consistent color, regardless of the CCT that you dial in. Upon closer inspection, it is a very even and consistent beam, regardless of the CCT. Blade cuts are extremely sharp. Now, like with all projection mounts, there is a little bit of color fringing on the edge of the cuts, but this is very good, especially when you consider that this cut is thinner than my finger and projected from three meters away from the wall. With defocus cuts, you can see the emitters if you're looking for them, but you have to do a huge amount of defocusing before this becomes an issue. Linear gobo patterns, such as Venetian blinds, are very sharp from edge to edge and have a lot of range for defocusing before you see the striped LED emitter array. With this square pattern here, you can see there is no concaving or convexing. All of the squares are an even size right across the beam, and the black lines are a consistent thickness and a consistent color. And once again, there is lots of room for defocusing a pattern like this. Upon very close inspection, you can see there is a little bit of chromatic aberration towards the edge of the projection, but the center is very clear. Now with this gobo projection, all of the circles are a consistent size and evenly spaced apart. Once again, upon really close inspection and on within 30 centimeters of the wall here, you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration or color fringing. This is more noticeable with fine linear projections, but to give you some idea of scale, here's my hand. Now, just like with my Forza projection mounts, there is a bit of ghosting into the lens barrel, which you can see here if I expose into it. But I find in real world situations, this hasn't been a problem on set. Now, just to give you a brightness comparison, the much larger Nanlite 19 degree projector mount on the same light comes in at 2.4 times brighter. Now let's take a look at this attachment on the Kame TV 220D. And just like with the previous light, this has a very even beam from edge to edge. The blade cuts are also incredibly sharp, but the area outside the blade cuts isn't jet black. There is a bit of ghosting there. Fine linear projections are sharp from edge to edge, and there is a heap of range for defocusing. But if you expose into the blacks, you can see the lens barrel around the gobos. However, in a real world situation, I don't think this is going to be an issue. Now, upon really close inspection, you can see there is some chromatic aberration here, or color fraying. With the square pattern here, you can see there's no convexing or concaving. However, the black lines are not as consistently dark as they were with the previous light. And again, there's a massive range for defocusing. Upon closer inspection, you can see there is a minimal chromatic aberration or color fraying. Circles are a consistent size from edge to edge of the projection. And there is nothing weird going on when you focus and defocus a circular pattern. Upon closer inspection, you can see there is a bit of chromatic aberration towards the edge of the projections, but this is normal with projector mounts. Random patterns project really well with a relatively consistent focus from edge to edge, and there are no problems with defocusing these patterns. And as you can see from a closer inspection, minimal chromatic aberration. Now, if I compare this to the Nanlite projector with a similar diameter lens, the Nanlite projector comes in at 2.9 times brighter. Let's have a look now with the Kame TV 600D. Now, pretty much like with all the other lights, this has a beautiful, even and consistent beam. But if you have a look at the brightness figures, quite a lot of this 600 watts is getting lost somewhere. And there seems to be a lot more light around the outside of the projection than there was with the other lights. 
Blade cuts are just as sharp as with the other lights, but there is a bit more light bouncing around inside this barrel. Fine linear gobos are very sharp from edge to edge, and again, you've got a huge range of focus. But like with the other lights, you can see ghosting into the barrel. But once again, I don't think this is gonna give you any real world issues. Upon really close critical inspection, you can see some chromatic aberration. But to give you some idea, if I'm standing in front of it, I think it'd be okay. Square patterns have no convexing or concaving at all. And upon close inspection, you can see patterns like this have very minimal chromatic aberration. Circular patterns are consistent across the beam, but it's not as sharp on the edges as it is in the center. And once again, you have a huge range of defocusing with these patterns without any problems being evident. Upon close inspection, you can see there is really minimal chromatic aberration. Complex patterns are just as impressive and have equally as an impressive range of focusing and defocusing. And once again, upon close inspection, you can see there really is minimal chromatic aberration with this combination. However, compared to the larger and much more expensive NAN light projector with a similar beam angle, the NAN light projector is nearly four times brighter. The next light I tried was the Aperture 300D Mark II. And just like with the other lights, it has a very even beam with very sharp blade cuts. Fine linear patterns such as Venetian blinds are sharp from edge to edge, with a lot of scope for defocusing. However, just like with the other lights, if you expose into the blacks, you can see the barrel. But I don't think this is going to give you any problems in the real world. With square patterns, there is no concaving or convexing, but I do note that the black lines are not as consistently dark across the beam nor do they seem to focus and defocus evenly. Upon very close inspection, you can see there is almost no chromatic aberration or color fraying, except for the very edge of the gobo. Circles are consistent across the beam, with a lot of scope for defocusing. And as you can see, with the exception of the very edge of the beam, there is pretty much no chromatic aberration. Complex gobo patterns are also very impressive, with a heap of scope for defocusing. And once again, with the exception of the very edge of the beam, there is pretty much no chromatic aberration or color fraying. Now to give you something to compare the numbers to, I've got the 300D Mark II running through the aperture spotlight mount. Unfortunately, I only have a 36 degree lens for this, so it's not really a fair comparison, but at least you get something to compare it to. Next, I tried the Aperture 600X Pro. And just like with the other lights, this has a very even and consistent beam with very good blade cuts. There is a lot of room for focusing and defocusing without seeing the color emitters. And the results are the same regardless of the CCT that you dial in. But as a negative, there's not a lot of brightness with this combination. Fine linear gobo projections are impressively sharp regardless of the CCT that you dial in. And you have a massive amount of scope for defocusing. Upon closer inspection, there is very minimal chromatic aberration or color fraying. The square pattern, you can see there's no concaving or convexing issues. And upon closer inspection, you can see there's minimal color fraying, just a little bit on the edge of the projection. Circle patterns are consistent across the whole width of the beam, and there are no issues with focusing or defocusing. And again, on closer inspection of circular patterns, very minimal color fraying. Complex gobo patterns are quite impressive, but they are a bit soft on the edge of the projections, and there is a massive scope for focusing and defocusing. Upon close inspection of complex patterns, there is almost no chromatic aberration. Now, the only other projector I've got that fits the Aperture 600X is the original Aperture Spotlight mount, and I only have a 36 degree barrel for this. 
but here are some numbers to help you get a comparison. The next light I tried was the Aperture 600C Pro. And just like with the other 600s, not a lot of light is getting out of the front. But optically, it's pretty amazing. Regardless of the colours that you dial in, the cuts are really nice. There is heaps of scope for defocusing, and again, regardless of the colour, everything's very consistent. Fine linear gobo patterns like Venetian blinds are incredibly sharp. And the results with a soft focus are the same regardless of the colour you dial in. But as you've probably guessed, you can see detail into the black areas if you're exposing for it. Now it's not perfect in terms of chromatic aberration, but as you can see here, if I was standing in front of the projection, it would be pretty good. Square patterns have no concaving or convexing, but I am going to note that the black lines are not equally as sharp or dense in their blackness as with other lights. Upon closer inspection, you can see there is almost no chromatic aberration or colour fraying. Circles are very consistent across the beam. And there's nothing crazy going on when you focus and defocus. The sharpness is consistent regardless of the colour that you dial in. And upon closer inspection, you can see minimal chromatic aberration just a little bit on the edge of the beam. Complex gobo patterns are insanely sharp. regardless of the colour that you dial in. Now upon closer inspection, you can see the very, very edge of the gobo isn't as sharp as the rest, but it's damn impressive. Now to give you a comparison here, I'm using the Aperture Nova 600C Pro on the Nanlight projector with a similar diameter lens. This combination of projector mount and light is what I actually use on set. This combination is fantastic. As you can see here, the Nanlux projector is supplying a little bit over three and a half times more light level. Now I did try this projection mount with Forza lights and it works just as good optically on those as it does with everything else. But the reason I don't wanna show you those test results is because the only Forza lights I have that are bow and mount are the 720s and that's over the limit for these. All right, so that's another gear review done. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.